welcome back to Cruising as Crew, my name is Lucy and today I'm going to be going through a few things that you should bear in mind if you are considering coming back to work on board cruise ships after the Covid pandemic. But before we start I just want to remind you to click like and subscribe if you enjoy my content and if you have any questions or video suggestions then please leave them in the comments down below or you can DM me over on Instagram at Cruising as Crew. How exciting is this guys? I am back in a sailor cabin, they have very kindly let me have a sailor cabin for a few hours just so I can film a video in here because obviously I'm on a cruise ship there's loads of places that I could film a video but if I do film a video in a public space I do have to wear a mask which can be a little bit off-putting for you guys to watch and also there's background noise so we have a sailor cabin which I forgot how nice they were but anyway, well after the pandemic, I mean everything has changed. The whole world is different now and that is no different for the cruising industry. There are some things that are very similar but there is a lot that has changed. Now some of these changes are good, some of them not so good but of course they are all necessary for the moment. Regardless of these changes, I'm still having a great time everyone else on here is having a great time. This video is by no means me saying don't work on cruise ships now, on the contrary, but there are some things that you should be aware of if you're coming back or starting your cruise ship career. So the first one is going to be quarantining when you come on board. As many of you know, I had to quarantine when I came back on Virgin Voyages. If you haven't seen my vlogs, go and check them out. I vlogged the whole quarantine experience. I really enjoyed my time in quarantine because I was able to keep myself busy. However, I could definitely see that quarantining would be a challenge if you were not productive and you didn't have anything to keep you busy. Because having to quarantine for 10 to 15 days, which is the length that most cruise lines are getting their crew to quarantine for, is a long time to be stuck in a cabin. Even if it is one as beautiful as this, it is a long time to be stuck in a room. And depending on where you are from in the world, you might have to quarantine for a lot longer. My really good friend who is from India, he had to quarantine at home when he was in India. Then when he flew to Miami, he had to quarantine in Miami. And when he finally got on board the ship, he had to quarantine on the ship. So he had to quarantine for about five weeks in total. Obviously he had the flight and joining the ship in between, but that's commitment. That really is commitment. So you definitely need to be up for the challenge. You definitely need to have some books to read, some movies to watch, some jigsaw puzzles to do, something to keep you occupied. Do be aware that you will have to quarantine. Still on the topic of quarantining. At the moment, the cruise industry is taking every possible precaution to ensure that no one gets COVID and if someone does test positive for COVID, that they are minimizing the spread as much as possible. This means if you do have COVID or any COVID symptoms, you will have to quarantine and this could potentially be in a crew cabin. Now, of course, they will try and get you to quarantine in a passenger cabin where possible and to be honest, that's likely because not many cruise ships are going to have full capacity with sailors. So there are going to be spare passenger cabins where crew can quarantine if they need to. But it is a possibility that you will have to quarantine on your crew cabin, maybe for like 24 hours. If you have to do a long quarantine, you will absolutely be moved to a sailor cabin. However, if you come down with some like 24 hour bug or maybe someone you have been around tests positive for COVID and then as a precaution, you may need to isolate as well. And that could be in a crew cabin. It won't be for long. However, 24 hours quarantining in a crew cabin, I imagine would feel like 24 days. So it's very unlikely that this will happen. However, you should know that it is a possibility. So once again, it's very important that you bring things to do while you are in the cabin. So when you're packing for your cruise ship contract, bear in mind that you could be quarantining and what are you gonna do in that time to keep yourself occupied? Food. A very important topic. So I have spoke to a lot of my friends who are on lots of different cruise lines who have all just gone through their quarantining process. And as you may be aware, when you are in quarantine, you get the food delivered to your cabin. Whilst you do get to select what you are gonna have for breakfast, lunch and dinner off a menu, it is a limited choice. Some days are better than others. Some cruise lines are better than others with the food that they provide for the crew who are in quarantine. 
So what I would say is you're probably not going to be getting a whole lot of nutrient rich food. So I would definitely recommend investing in some vitamins, maybe some protein, just so you are getting the right amount of nutrients in you because you may not get all the nutrients that you would get at home through your food when you are on board. So come prepared. I bought some protein powder with me and I showed you in the vlog, I bought some multivitamins, like I bought like a whole load of goodies. Definitely bring some snacks with you. I kind of came on thinking I won't take many things to snack on and boy do I regret it. So definitely bring some snacks with you but also bring multivitamins, protein powder, especially if you are on like a plant-based diet or you're, you're vegetarian. Now when you are out of quarantine and you can go to the mess, which is where the crew eat their dinner, this is gonna be a very different setup to what you are used to. So normally the mess is kind of like a buffet style. You go in, you pick a plate and you help yourself to the food. However, now you will have people serving you the food. I don't know whether this is on every cruise line. From people I've spoke to and my own experience, uh, this is, what's happening for the time being which is fantastic however this does slow the process down so it is going to take a little bit longer at meal times to get your food especially if your lunch break is prime time it's at one o'clock or something when the majority of the crew are going to go for their lunch you just need to be patient you are going to have to wait a little bit because Every, you know, everyone has to be served, everyone has to obviously follow the precautions, wash their hands, sanitize, wait to be served their food, socially distance, you know, everything has to be taken into consideration. And it's not a bad thing, obviously it ensures that we all stay safe and healthy, but it does slow things down. So you will just need to be patient. You have to wear a mask. So any public areas, you have to wear a mask. The only time that you can take your mask off is when you are in your cabin or when you are sat down eating. If you get up to go and get more food or go and get a drink, you have to put your mask on. If you are just drinking, then you can't take your mask off. You just pull it down, take a sip and then put it back on. So it really is just while you are eating food, that's when you can take your mask off. It is a pain but we have been doing this for a while now. We're used to wearing masks. Uh, I'm sure we're all longing for the day where we don't have to wear masks, but you will be wearing a mask for the majority of the time. So please do take that into consideration when you are coming back on board. You will not be able to get off in port. So one of the best perks about working on a cruise ship is when the ship docks somewhere, you can get off if you have time off work to explore the port. And you know, it's an amazing way to see the world. However, for the moment, cruise shore leave is restricted because the more people get off, the more chance there is of someone bringing something back on board and before you know it, it's a mess. So if you are going to work on cruise ships, just be aware that you will not be getting off. So go on expecting to spend your entire contract on board the ship and if you do happen to be granted shore leave a few days in your contract, then that's a bonus. The likelihood is whatever ship you go on, there's probably going to be more sea days. So for the moment, cruising is going to be more ship focused, meaning that we want people to come on board to enjoy the ship rather than come on board to see some amazing ports. So a lot of ships from many different cruise lines are changing their itineraries so that they have an embarkation day, passengers come on, then they go out to sea and maybe have three to five sea days and then they're going to drop the passengers back at the port where they embarked. So passengers really are coming on a cruise to enjoy the ship. Now for some departments on board cruise ships this really doesn't you know make a difference if you work in housekeeping, if you work in the kitchens, sea day, port day, you work very similar hours. However departments like the shops, casino, our shifts really are governed by where we are you know if we are at sea then the shops are going to be open all day the casino can be open all day however shops and the casino cannot be open when the ship is in port so for example before covid if i got a job on a ship that was you know port 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 i would only work in the evenings after the ship had set sail same with the casino they would open once the ship had set sail however because we are going to be at sea all the time 
the shops and the casino and other departments are going to be open all the time. This means that you are going to work more. It's not a bad thing, but you should just come on board expecting that you are going to be at sea a lot of the time and that's okay. The hours are going to be longer than what you are used to if you work in a department that is governed by where the ship is in the world. There's going to be restrictions to the social side of living on a cruise ship. So crew bar, gym access, restaurant privileges. Whilst in normal times, your position may have been able to eat in some of the passenger restaurants, that will be restricted now. Along with gym access, this will probably depend on how busy the gym is. Of course, there's only going to be a certain number of people allowed in the gym. If there's a cruise where loads of passengers are in the gym, then the crew access is going to be limited. However, if there's another cruise where none of the passengers want to use the gym, then of course, I'm sure crew will be allowed in. Same with the crew bar, you know, masks, social distancing, this all still applies. So they want to avoid any kind of um, crowding. And it wouldn't be fair to only open the crew bar up to a few people. And there's no real way of ensuring that everyone gets to go to crew bar. So it's easier if they just have it closed or maybe they'll just open it for a few hours instead of having it open all night. So the social side of living and working on a cruise ship is going to be slightly different. And then the last one is a regular PCR test, temperature checks every day. I don't know whether this is the same on every cruise line, but I would imagine it is. It's random PCR tests. So, you know, when you're on a cruise ship, they do like random drug tests and that's what they're gonna be doing now. They're gonna do random PCR tests but everyone is also going to be frequently tested. So yeah, a lot has changed. And I know a few things in there, it all sounds a bit doom and gloom, but it's fine. It, it, like most things, you know, the thought is worse than the actuality. Now that I'm here and I'm living with all of these things that I've just mentioned in this video, it's absolutely fine. I'm still having a fantastic time. So if you are going to work on a cruise ship, you can still get excited about it, you're still going to have an amazing time, but it is just going to be a little bit different. I mean, if you're starting work on cruise ships and you've never been before, this is actually the best time to start because it's only gonna get better. However, you know, if you've been doing this for a while and you're considering going back, there are definitely gonna be changes, but I mean, you know how it is. You adapt and you make the most of what you've got. Anyway, guys, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, then please press the like button and the subscribe button. It would mean the world to me. Remember, if you have video suggestions or questions, you can leave them in the comments down below or DM me over on Instagram at Cruising as Crew. But I hope you have a fantastic day. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video, guys. Bye.